the next uh, session, which is process strategy. Is what kind of process would you use for uh, manufacturing or service environment, and what kind of things you would look at when you do the process decision. So let's take a quick look at a, what a process is. So when we talk about a process strategy, it is a pattern of different decisions, uh, and these could be decisions that are made to manage the process uh, so that they can achieve the competitive priorities. So just to give you an example of what I'm talking about here is when an automotive manufacturer decides to make a vehicle, they typically go on what is known as assembly line. And what they would do is they would have specialization of labor. So every person has a job on the assembly line. So for example, one person tightens the nuts and bolts, uh, one person puts the hood on, and then there's another machinery which does the welding and so on. So you're using a process in which you're using assembly line, which is mass production. Now you could have a food manufacturing company, and what they would do is they would use what is known as a batch strategy, batch manufacturing, in which they'll make small batches of products. So the first batch would be, let's say, this is a company making uh, candies, and they will make strawberry candies in one batch. They'll make, let's say, raspberry candies and so on. So they'll make different batches of these products so they can differentiate their products for the customer base. So if you don't have a lot of variation in your product, then you would go for something which is known as a mass production. You may make some minor changes to it, but overall the product is pretty much the same as compared to the last one. If you have a high amount of variation, that's when you would use what is known as a batch process. Uh, you can also have a hybrid of the two processes, and I'll talk about that in a moment here. So we talk about customer uh, processes uh, in which a supply chain process. You can have outsourcing. Um, when you talk about, I'm sorry, outsourcing, um, you can talk about how that process is completely outsourced to an outside provider. You can have warehousing. Warehousing is uh, something in which a product is brought into a facility. It is sorted. It is received. You, know, you, don't, you do some process on it, and then it's sent to the final customer. You do sourcing as well. And with sourcing, you're talking about getting the inbound products. For example, the raw materials. It could be uh, the product in its unpackaged form, and then you package it and send it out to the customer. If you sell something to a customer, you have to have some customer service. For example, you're thinking about uh, bringing products in and, for example, if, if a product was broken, then you're hoping to bring it in and do some process on that and then send it back to the customer. For example, Dell does that. If your laptop or Lenovo also does that, is if your laptop breaks down, you ship it to them they fix your laptop and they ship it back to you. So that's kind of the customer service process in a supply chain. So it's not over the phone. And your logistics major, so you know what logistics is, the process of getting not only the physical product to the customer, but the information that goes along with that and the cash, tra cash transactions. Now, cross-docking is also a process in which you bring products in on one end the product doesn't get stored for long. It's staged in a warehouse, and then it has a demand somewhere, and it gets shipped to the customer right away. So it doesn't stay in the facility for too long. So that's cross-talking. And there's many other business function processes. Uh, there's activity-based costing. I'm probably sure you've done that in your accounting. There's asset management, billing, uh, complaint handling from customers or vendors. You have credit management. If you're hoping to sell something, you want to make sure that you, the customer is credit worthy. Customer satisfaction in terms of uh, products sold, service levels, and so on. You have employee benefits. So you have a whole range of other business functions which depend on your process. So when we talk about uh, the process strategy decisions, we're really talking about uh, the process structure which is the first box up top. You're talking about how much contact you have with the customer. Do you have a high level of contact or do you have a low level of contact? When we talk about a high level of contact, 
a subway is probably an example of a high level contact versus when we talk about manufacturing let's say Hyundai manufacturing their vehicles that's a low level contact so depending on what kind of contact you have with the customer a low or a high and what kind of uh, flexibility you need in your production that depends on your capital intensity what that means is do you have low automation for example if you're in a subway you don't have any automation versus if you're in a Hyundai plant you have a high level of automation and that's where what determines what strategies you would use to make some changes and that leads to your effective process design if you may. So I talked about customer contact uh, when we talk about in a service process um, in a service process the dimension you have to be present because if you're not there the customer doesn't feel like they're getting a good service so usually it should have a high amount of contact um, and if you have customers uh, for example if you go to a doctor's office uh, it has people that are being processed and then you can have to have contact intensity what that means is you need to be not only active but you need to be visible for example I've been to these restaurants and what they've done for the customer service is they've actually put a glass window between the customers where they're eating the food and where the food is actually being made so now even though the customer is sitting and eating the food they actually can see how the food is being made so that is an active and visible example if you may versus when you have a low contact it's passive out of sight you don't really want the customer to see what you're doing when you're in a service environment you need to have a personal contact uh, high high person skills versus a factory worker that is putting the hood on your vehicle they don't need they don't really need to have any personal skills or personal customer service skills and the method of delivery in a face-to-face -face is uh, it's usually a face-to-face -face in, a, in a service environment versus when we have a low contact it's usually the package is shipped or you send an email and that's a low contact example so there's a couple of process structures and services you can have high customer contact you can have some customization for example if you're selling an insurance if you're selling a home if you're selling um, financial documents or financial services then you usually want to have a high amount of customization high amount of customer contact there's a lot of process divergence what that means is a process can take any path and the salesperson or the customer who's selling it has to go along with that and there has to be a high amount of flexibility in the flow as well so here's a couple of examples of front office in a service environment you can have a hybrid office and you can have a back office usually companies that do processing in the back for example account processing credit transactions or the back office the front office is the salespersons uh, the people who are selling the product your front desk person and so on that's your front office some cases you can have a hybrid office in which you have the customer be introduced to the front secretary and now they're taken back into the doctor's office so that could be an example of a hybrid office now in a manufacturing setting um, you can as, as, as I talked about that before you can have a job process so when you think of a job process you're thinking of a one-of-a-kind uh, one example that comes to mind right away is the Penobscot Narrows Bridge which is an example of a job process it only happened once and it's pretty unique so job process is one-of-a-kind unique on the other hand batch process can be small or large so the candy example applies here and the automobile example that I gave you is the line process in which if you're making a automobile it's 24 7 365 I'm sorry it, it goes on for a couple of days so but you're making the same product for a continuous period of time the last one is your continuous flow which is the 24 7 365 a process which never stops and goes on for a couple of years to give an example of that you can think of that as uh, the uh, refinery you can also think of that as the nuclear power plant they only shut down once in maybe 10 15 years pipeline flow that's again an example of continuous flow as well so usually commodity based 
huge volumes, one or two products at the max. Line process, they may have a couple of variations. For example, you could produce um, a SUV, you could produce a family vehicle, you can produce a small vehicle, and that's an assembly line. Batch process has more variation of um, the product. So you could be producing different kinds of candies. You could produce a candy cane or so on. So you have much more variety, but your volumes are much low. Job process, only one product, only gets produced once and very unique. So this is uh, kind of the um, split between job, batch, line, and continuous flow. Let me just stop here for a second and see if anybody has any questions. Mark, Jeff, Mike, all good? All good. Okay, super. Making sense so far? Okay. Now, you can also do what is known as make to order. So when you talk about make to order, you are receiving the order. And after you receive the order, you make the product. So it's completely, you don't have anything at all, and you're making it from scratch. The other one is known as postponement, I'm sorry, assemble to order. And in this, you use post, the postponement strategy, which IKEA uses. Even Dell uses this. There's some standardized pieces that they have on hand. And once they receive the order, they put those together and they customize it to your needs. So you have postponement and you're customizing it to the customer's need. And what you also have is known as make to stock, in which you're mass producing the product beforehand in anticipation of demand. So what that means is you're producing uh, cereals, you're producing food products. Um, like cooked beans uh, in a can and you ship them, you make them, you ship them to the store and you're hoping to sell them sometime in the future. So let me stop at this point and give you a couple of examples of um, make to stock, assemble to order, uh, make to order and then a couple of postponed strategies which um, companies have taken on. So how many of you have had uh, apparel that you've had customized? Have you bought anything that you've had customized from someone? Mike had a laptop customized. Oh, what kind of a laptop was that? MacBook Pro. Oh, MacBook Pro. Now, did you have it so that you had your name embossed on it and so on? Yes. Okay. All of, All of that. Okay. Let me show you an example of a company which does uh, jewelries, and they actually can customize and send you a custom-built jewelry in less than a day. So the website is bluenile.com. And they do diamond jewelry. And you can begin with a diamond. So you select what kind of a diamond you need. And it does say only diamonds available for delivery before the Valentine's Day are displayed. So that means anything which is after that date cannot be delivered. So that means tomorrow, they can deliver it tomorrow. And I'm going to go a little uh, less fancy, I guess. And select that one. And once I see it, I can add it to the ring. 
I can choose my setting. That looks good. So I put in my metal, I've selected this style. And I get the ring size, which is six, actually six and a half. And I add it to my basket. And it says if I order it within the next hour and 40 minutes, that they will deliver it by tomorrow. So this is a totally custom built, uh, custom diamond, which they can deliver in less than one day, which is pretty amazing. So that is known as mass customization. Now, how can Blue Nile do this? They have the diamonds ready to go. And they have people that are on the other side. And what they can do is they can customize the ring within less than half an hour. And they'll have it to FedEx. FedEx is on their um, shop and they're based out of Seattle. And um, once they have it on Seattle, they have it to FedEx and they can do an overnight and have it to um, me essentially by tomorrow, so which is pretty amazing. Another company which does that is Nike ID. And have has any of you ever ordered something on there? Again, it's the same process, if you may. Um, no? Okay. But it's the same process in which what you can do is um, you can go in and you can select the type of shoe that you want ordered. You can shop a collection. You can customize with Nike ID. So once I shop the collection, I can find out which shoes are the ones that really fancy me. Yeah, let me just... Whoops. So this is LeBron James. Wow, that's really fancy. That is... So that, that looks much like my... And again, I can customize it down to the last thing. They have so many things I can customize and for less than the same price that I would get this at store. I can have my name embossed, I can have it shipped to me and this takes less than uh, seven days. Another company which does it is M&M's. And it's the same process, if you may. Uh, I can select different kind of candies. I can add an image. Uh, I don't have any images now. But I can add images, I can add clip cards, I can add a message and so on. And so on. I can get a Valentine's Day gift and uh, so again that is mass this all is what I'm talking about now is mass customization. So companies can do this because they have some standardized products ready to go. But at the same time, they have some variations in the process which they can make that they can customize it to the customer's need. So, let me stop at this point and see if you have any questions. No? I think that is a no. How about Jeff and Mike? Nope. Okay. Well, I think I'll stop at this point and continue this uh, discussion um, next week. I am planning to still put um, the video for the uh, Microsoft project on.
and uh, I'll, I'll walk the different steps on how to put that through and how to put EVM in that process as well. Um, so again, look out for that sometime tomorrow or so on. So look out for that sometime uh, tomorrow that I can put that on. And again, it's, it's a reinforcement of what we just talked about today. Okay. And I've extended the deadline for that to next Monday. Uh, I'm still looking for the three questions on this one today. And I'll post a video for this online as well. Okay. So if I don't see any questions, I'm going to pause my screen and stop my recording. And then I'll post a video on Canvas.